Welcome back to Dad Meat, baby. What it's a weekend, Tim. Dawn of a new age. Man. Are you getting tired of new ages? <laughs> I feel like it's... I mean, we're constantly on the cusp of a new time. Tim, I treat new ages like those Ice Age movies. I'm beating off to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Jake Matera. <laughs> hey, guys. Oh, man. Man. It's good to have you on this side of the room. This is wild. You've been you've been popping. Oh, come on, dude. Oh yeah, I know. Come on, dude. I yell at people <laughs> all the time fuck? for this. Yeah. What are you doing? He First get, time, long time. He gets one great clips haircut and <laughs> loses his fucking mind. <laughs> damn it! I should have took that. Jacob, hat. damn it. Yeah, you've been killing it on the mic over there. So oh. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste an empty seat on it. You know what I mean? Let's it, bring him over. I like the way you guys look together. If you guys are ever in a horrible accident and paralyzed together, you should think about getting a love seat wheelchair. Getting, oh, I thought you were saying getting sewn together. <laughs> that would be cool too. Yeah, I would consider that. <laughs> That'd be cool. A love seat yeah. wheelchair though. Those what if we got? Happen. What if we got into an accident? We got Jake an exoskeleton, and I was like piloting it in the front, like Krang. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I would like that too. If I was just moving Jake's body around. Did you see Tim's head in here. I just got- <laughs> <laughs> like the teenage mutant. Yeah. I might have to cut y'all's brakes. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, it's, it's the, the dawn of a dawn of a new era. Uh, you want to talk about your jab? What should we talk about first? Let's get into your jab because we got a cool. Oh, all right. Because that was that started everything. That, that set the whole thing in motion. We were getting ready for our big shows over the weekend. Our and big then, dude, our big time tour in the big city. You got some big news. You're talking about Albany, of course. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. The the first day of our lowercase t tour. Obviously, I, I'm, I'm sick of people pointing out like, oh, it's like five cities and everything. Yeah, no shit. No shit, dude. What do you want us to do? Like, come to our five shows independently. We understand it's not big enough to be called a tour. What the fuck do you want us to do? Dude? Besides that, what the fuck do you think a tour is? <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah. Technically, you have to hit yeah, nine I saw, cities. Dude, there was, yeah. a con- there was a comment that was like, uh, yeah, this is just a couple of dates that they're going to do. It's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> what okay, is a tour? dude. Yeah. But uh, yeah, dude, the morning of the first the first show uh i woke up to a, a text message from uh, one of my bosses and it was like hey there's an important meeting in five minutes i need you to call into it and i was like oh okay that's like out of the ordinary but it's not alarm it's not red sirens going off you yeah. know what i mean so i joined it a little bit early and i'm in there and i'm bullshitting and it's kind of laid back i was like all right well, it's probably nothing and it, was there any part of you that thought about calling into that meeting and being like hi am i the ninth caller <laughs> <laughs> Mike, let me promise you, I've never had that impulse in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Every me, time. myself, personally, yes, I do begin impulses like that. And yes, I act on them. And yeah, every call ends with concert tickets for the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, your mother is dead and enjoy the cheap trick tickets. <laughs> All right, thanks, Aunt Nance. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> What was I talking? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, so I, uh, Mary Jo needed help with like um, a Zoom call she was on. So I was like, uh, after I read the tone, I was like, this is nothing. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. I was like, yo, I gotta, uh, I gotta go help my wife with something. I'll be right back. And I hit mute and I run in the other room to help Mary Jo with her computer. And it takes me like ninety. I'm, say, I'm, so I'm gonna say at tops ninety seconds. Okay. And I come back to my computer and I sit down, and the meeting has filled up, and they're at the end of a PowerPoint presentation about everyone in the meeting being fired so they just rounded us up and they're like you're all gone and uh dude my <laughs> boss wasn't in there it was just like a faceless like see you later you know what yeah, i mean they dude. had a group come in and do it yeah five years brutal five years dude i fucking i i i nursed the company through a ransomware attack last year yeah I imagine that. being in it you guys i mean you're reading about ransomware attacks in the news imagine being in the it department that has to clean up the mess after that kind of thing that was the thing last year last spring when i was like I was coming in here just like completely wiped out, completely wasted, tired. I had I had no time off. I was leaving for weeks at a time, you know, saying goodbye to my family. Never even got a fucking thank you for that. I had to like t- I had to say something to somebody like, "Hey, is anybody going to say thanks to me and my fucking team that helped?" Nothing. So then Thursday, they just fucking unceremoniously fire me. Now, would you consider contacting those Chinese hackers again and being like, oh, boys, Totino's yeah. Pizza Rolls. <laughs> oh, these yeah. old passwords that are just lying? Don't get us again. I mean, even joking about that would probably get me in very serious trouble right now. <laughs> well, I can joke about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me, myself, personally, <laughs> would never joke about that. You? Allow me to be your mouthpiece. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, else yeah. would you like me to say right now? <laughs> well, I think I uh, I sent some... So I texted... Uh, so, all right. I, I, I get off this call and I look up at my wife and I say, I just got fired. And she goes, congratulations. 
Oh my god. Hell yeah, dude. That's Yo, the best. I got pussy the day I lost my job. Dude. How fucking tight is my life? Tim, did you consider like getting it while like you're getting the presentation? Oh, I always try. <laughs> I there hasn't been a Zoom call I've been on where I didn't try to like <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Just, you know what I mean? That's part of the exit package. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think I don't know if this is true with everyone else. But I think the the proper thing, the thing that you should be doing if you're on a work from home Zoom call is, first of all, turn your camera off. No one needs to be on screen, but you should be seeing if you can get chubbed. And if you can get chubbed, just close your laptop and, and crank one out. Mm-hmm. That's and Jake, in regards to that kind of, of severance package, it's usually a batch of cum and a towel thrown at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope the towel first and then the cum. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, man, what cool timing, you know? Was everyone like, because it, was, it wasn't just you, right? It was like. It was me and I think seven other faceless people who I, yeah. worked, I worked with. Was like the chat like freaking out? Everyone was turning their microphones on, like yelling and screaming or. No, because some of the people were in the office and then I was uh, at home and okay. I think one other person was at home. Everyone else was like sitting there while someone clicked through a PowerPoint about Dude. them being fired. That's pretty. I would I would probably have a physical reaction if I was in the room with people like that. Mm. You know, I've yeah. been in one of those before the the layoffs. Yeah, they call. Guy. They're like, "Hi, if you're in this meeting, it means you're go- you're gone." Oh no! And I was just like, "Oh, oh well." And you're in person? Uh, no, thank God it was over the phone. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. man. In person, because over the phone, I thought that if I started like saying, "Suck everyone in this meeting, suck my dick," you're all gay. <laughs> I didn't want to seem unhinged. I wanted to like when I finally said something, I wanted to seem like, "Wow, dude, that was like the John Wick of computers." You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I wanted to be IT John Wick. So I didn't say suck my dick. You're all gay. This this place sucks. I said I'm good, and I hung up. And then, uh, dude, my boss fucking texted me while I was on stage at the stand. So oh, oh okay. So it's our first it's our first night of shows, right? Or show? We're at the stand. We're the whole week. We're worried about like, oh my god, are we gonna sell enough tickets? Does anybody give a shit? Or is anyone even gonna be there? Yeah. The stand fills up completely. Dude. We're at capacity in the main room. Of the stand. Not That's a huge incredible. room. Not a huge room, dude. I'm not bragging about numbers. What I'm saying is we went to the place and we did the thing that we wanted to do. And Very it was cool. cool. Yeah. Very cool, dude. Great. Dude. All the boys crushed. Shane dropped in, blessed us. That was fucking beautiful. Very awesome. But while I'm on stage having the most fun I've ever had on stage, I get a text saying, Hey, just wanted to say thanks for all your, everything. It was a pleasure working with you. All that fucking shit. While you're on stage. While I'm on stage. I didn't read it on stage. Oh, thank- but, but I got off stage it. and it was the first thing I saw. Oh. And I I uh I sat on it for a little bit. We joked about it when we did like the live podcast thing. And then uh, later, at, like 2 a.m. in the hotel room, I was on Mushrooms. I was FaceTime with Mary Jo. And I was like, uh, you believe this fucking text message? I think I'm going to tell this dude to suck my dick. <laughs> and she was like, you should. Did you do it? I was like, well, I'm going to tell him to suck my dick then. She was like, do it. <laughs> those kind of people don't hear those words often enough. Yeah. Well, and then again, I thought I thought about it again. And I was like, I can't. I have to do something. I can't say, hey, I would appreciate a reference. You know yeah. what I mean? I can't I can't I can't get fired that way and then have a guy jack me off like that and then me go, Oh man, I would appreciate any help because then I have to I have to look at my kids every day. My kids have to look at me. And yeah. if I'm the guy who lives like that, they're lost. The kids are fucked Dude. if that's their dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. So at two AM, I'm i I'm tripping. And I'm just like, you know what, dude? I wish the feeling was mutual, bro. This was an insult. Truly disappointed in you. Don't need your reference. Don't want your reference. Shell shocked. God. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, dude. And he hasn't gotten back to me. But he when will. he does, I'm going to be like, yo, bro, someday you're going to be too old to work. None of this shit's going to matter. You're going to have a wall full of you shaking hands with people in suits. None of those people are ever going to give a shit about you. You're going to pass. You're going to pass in an empty house. Damn. You're going to you're gonna have a you're going to have a cold, dead heart. This is still the way text. before you die. This is <laughs> this is my draft for if he says like, wow, that's pretty unprofessional. So I'm like, OK, well, your mom thought it was cool. <laughs> so, it was, I mean, I mean, it was great. So we were off to the races and it's, you know, this is like what you always wanted, though. You you use the secret to get the, 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 the law of attraction to bring this to you. I guess. I mean, I did like money. Yeah. Money was tight, yeah. you know. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get new money. That was old money. That money's gone. New money's what we're all about. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't know if you guys know, but we have a Patreon. It's as little as a dollar a month. <laughs> Dude, ideally, every single patron jacks it up to $2, maybe for just the next couple. Then we'll be good. Don't worry about it. But that's where we're going. 
And uh, but then, I mean, we hit the ground running. The stand was incredible, dude. That's awesome. Albany, New York, was somehow incredible. Everyone in Albany bitched about Albany. They I hate Albany. Albany, man. It was dude. so nice, dude. The buildings Super were so cool nice. City. Yeah. The yep. people were all fat and depressed. It was my. It was my I, kind of town. I, 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 Jake, I almost stayed. We we had a very sweet black. You know how much we love our black women. Yes. Our black queens. When we checked in the her, our hotel, she was telling us about all the amenities that the hotel offered, and she ended by saying, "And if y'all don't got nothing to do, y'all can come down here and bother me." Mm. Damn. If, mm. if that isn't welcome to town, I don't know what is. Yeah. <laughs> She sounds lovely. Every time we walked out, I thought y'all was coming to see me. <laughs> <laughs> Where are y'all going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me go, just call down if y'all need to eat some pussy. You know what I mean? <laughs> y'all can split mine. There's always, <laughs> <laughs> there's always just an open bag of chips. <laughs> an open bag of pussy. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. y'all, y'all come eat my pussy, you hear? <laughs> that kind of shit. It was, she was really fun. <laughs> just so, just a Looney Tunes character. <laughs> <laughs> just a pussy painted on the wall that we run into. <laughs> pussy E <know>. coyote. <laughs> <laughs> we all run in and like come. Mike goes running. And it's the flat painting. Like why are they <laughs> I got my paw in there like Tom. <laughs> Yeah, they were fucking both great. Actually, personally, the stand show... Me, myself, show, personally? Me, myself, personally, as a person, <laughs> yes, I do watch Looney Tunes. <laughs> uh, I love the stand-up portion of the show. Yeah. Um, it felt great doing stand-up again, and uh, getting to do fucking 20 minutes felt great. Because I always had this weird thing in my head about just doing 10 minutes and like immediately being like, oh, I gotta go. Yeah. So haven't getting the I actually would life. prefer to do maybe a minute or less. I would go out and I would say hi and say, let me get out of your hair. <laughs> Let me stop bothering you guys. That's my impulse. Just immediately. Dude, the first laugh. So when I walk on stage, the first laugh I get, I'm like, I should let you guys go. I don't want to hold you guys up for the rest of the night. I'll see you later. And, oh, then, no. I just, and then I have to stand there and it's a struggle. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm acting like lights with commit- commitment issues. Let me get out of y'all's hair. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, so the stand up went great. And uh, <laughs> Jake, I don't know that anyone has ever eaten shit harder on a podcast than I ate shit Mm-mm. on that first show. No, Mike's being a fucking dickhead. Are you right saying now. New York City didn't appreciate the puns? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Jake, it was not. The second portion of the of the evening was not my night, dude. I was so upset about my performance on that podcast. I went back to the hotel as soon as the show was over. <laughs> did you? I did. And then I was lying in bed staring at the ceiling. And then you came back. I did. Did you walk? No, I took a, an Uber. So I spent sixty dollars <laughs> going back and forth and back. I didn't know that. Yes. Dude, I felt so <laughs> fucking bad because I felt like I ate shit so hard on the podcast no portion way. of the show. And it was Dude. like... It was, Number one, he didn't. Thank you. It was just so fucking... And it's just a podcast. Dude. I, it was just hanging out. I know. I know it was. I realize that now. But at the time, it went from... So funny. That's crazy. It went from nuts. everything getting fucking laughs that I said during the stand-up portion <laughs> to just... <laughs> just not, in yeah. the fucking podcast. No. And as soon as All it was right. done, I said goodbye to Heskey. I didn't even say goodbye. I just pretended a phone call. <laughs> and I walked around the block. And I got an Uber around the block. And I went back to the hotel. And I'm lying in bed. I'd be like, what the fuck was wrong with me? Dude. And I stared up at the ceiling. And then I was like, wait a minute. I'm being an enormous bitch right now. I need to go back there and hang out with everybody. How long did you lay on the bed? You put himself in timeout. 10 minutes. <laughs> oh my God. 10 you minute timeout. I just, did. Yeah. But I could have saved myself $60. That's so fucking funny. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. No, it was but, fine. So we, it, 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 Mike was fine. It was who gives a shit. It the was boy, a. He's always great. It was a live. Po- it was like a crowd work podcast. It yeah. was fun, but Mike was. Uh, every time Mike made a joke, it was like <laughs> during laughter or, and Colin was on the other side of me, and it was just like. I had a hard, very hard time, time every finding time, rhythm. Every time yeah. Mike said a joke, Colin went, "What was that, righty?" And. <laughs> Mike would just very politely repeat his entire joke. Huge uh, mistake. Uh, biggest mistake, dude. dude. <laughs> Don't ever do that. Yeah. Lesson learned. <laughs> and then that became the joke. And then that was funny. Every time Mike said something, you'd repeat it again. And then it was funny that he repeated the whole yeah. thing. It was great. It became a game, like an improv show. Yeah. It well, was, yeah, except it was, funny. It was incredible, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was an improv. Improv is in it wasn't funny to me. <laughs> yes, it was exactly improv, Jake. But other than that, dude, but we had a good overall, time. W- once I got back to the stand, I was like, all right. Overall, incredible night. So many cool people came out. Dude, fucking 
our, our boy Kenny came out, flew out from fucking Detroit. Are you serious? Just yeah, we met him at Skankfest. Incredible and, dude. And he he's, the, he's the Hasbro man. Oh man. So shout out to Kenny again. You are the fucking man. Yeah. Fucking Miguel, Drew, oh, dude, the yeah. fucking whole squad came out. Oh, my hottest friend, Miguel. Yeah, he was there. Dude, he, he is disturbingly up. handsome. It's he's fucked a good up. looking dude. It's a fucked up situation. <laughs> dude, he is. Then he came up to Albany to hang out with us, too. Yeah, that was he, fucking he drove up shit. to Albany the next night. He's like the Staten Island Johnny Depp. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always happy when he's around because then, like, every time I get to meet people, I'm like, I have normal hot friends. This, it's, not all, <laughs> it's not all gnarly retards. <laughs> I, I met him. I did a show at Governor's once in Long Island, and he came out to see the show. It, like, blew me away. Yeah, dude. He is he fucking Wani Depp. And I was <laughs> <laughs> But he's so good looking. I'm like, can you just yeah? Can you stand away can you from sit me? the other way? <laughs> yeah. Face away. Yeah. yeah. Can you please watch the show from the car? Yeah. <laughs> but he is the fucking man. And dude, fucking Albany, man. We get up there and it's fucking two degrees. Um, we we get an offer to eat pussy from the concierge, <laughs> and then we go to her the, name was actually concierge, <laughs> dude. It, it was. <laughs> C apostrophe concierge. <laughs> <laughs> But, dude, we went to the fucking... The theater was like... It looked like an old-timey movie set where, yeah. like, when you woke up the next day, you would be set back in time. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, it's this day over again. Oh, wow. It was incredible. And uh, there's always that sinking feeling. Like, when you show up to, like, your show... I say always, as in the two that we've had, yeah. where you're just like, I don't know if anybody's going to come. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. no. I mean, he's saying it like... But, but we've been, we've been yeah. doing stand-up for 10 years yeah. at unattended shows oh yeah. yeah oh my god that's the worst <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean and then now they're out like this is your show and they're mm-hmm. coming to see you guys that's that's still hasn't set in but like yeah i i'm i'm used to the feeling of going to a bar show where yeah. if there's a crowd they don't know that they're about to hear comedy and they hate it yeah well dude there were some people there that just saw like oh comedy i guess i'll come see this at both of them yep uh at the state well i think and everybody we, had a and good we time. lit them the fuck up dog this fucking lady um that really got read the business. I wish I had filmed Tim doing it. I did get some footage of Kali doing it, so I'm going to post that at some point. But this fucking drunk 65-year-old who dressed like a fucking Hot Topic assistant manager <laughs> was hanging out. and um, Well, she I, worked at the movie theater that we were performing at. Yeah, well, she did. I, she says she did. I, she I, did. She was on the she staff. Was, her her shift ended. She came into the show, and she had been flagged. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. And she fucking, um, at first it started off okay. Like, she was, like, agreeing with something I said about January 6th, which was never a good sign. And then I made the mistake of engaging with her. (laughs) And then the floodgates just fucking opened. She didn't shut up for the next two fucking hours. Oh, no. Dude, eventually she took a nap. (laughs) She got tuckered out. She was sound asleep during the podcast portion of the show. And then she woke up something fucking Beetlejuice three times to her. (laughs) <laughs> and she rose from the fucking dead to come back to take umbrage with something that somebody said. Yeah. But what a wonderful part of that. Uh, a bunch of men were talking about what they've done in jail. Um, yeah, I do. I wish we could do this with a big crowd every week. I wish we could do dad meet with a big crowd every week and just like, dude. You know, show us your handler on the way in. If, <laughs> if you're not wearing an all the time helmet, dude, sorry, no dude, ticket. Yeah. To that point, uh, our fucking boy from Twitter, Scumtard Prime, was there. Hell yeah, wearing a fucking <laughs> DX <laughs> jersey. Yeah, <laughs> it said Degenerate sixty nine. I was like, dude, dude that, that's honestly what made me feel better about thinking that people might show up. It's yeah. seeing a fucking Degenerate sixty nine yeah, jersey. It's like, all right, that's we're amongst incredible. our people. Yeah. Yeah. That was sick, and just so many great bubs. Oh, okay. I, I, are you? Yeah, you, yeah. I have a great thing about the stand. I would love to hear. It. Okay, this is, and I, 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 I'm just trying to tell stories that aren't like. And then we fucking killed on stage, dude. It was so <laughs> sick. No, so we got the stand, and uh, we we huh, we made the mistake of like checking ticket sales for everything too early. So it was like, dude, the show's only a month away, and we only have like twenty tickets sold, <laughs> which is you a great I mean? number. That's well, a great number on the a month out. It was just giving ourselves anxiety on purpose, yeah. and then uh, so the night that we get there, I'm like, uh, you know, I'm I'm going to explode. I'm having a tumultuous day. <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm nervous to even ask. Yeah, I'm about that break. We'll get out of my fucking. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm about to suck. I need a little. Um, we get there and we find out we sold enough that it's at least not going to be a disaster. Mm-hmm. And then we're hopeful for walk-ins. And then uh, Joe from the stand, uh, he stops us because we're like, oh, dude, that's a relief. Thank you. And we're, we go to walk away. He goes, wait, 
Something weird happened, though. Almost all the tickets are single tickets, which is fairly unusual for us. Dude, that He's like, we awesome. track metrics on, on everything that we do. Single tickets are pretty rare. It's typically like a guy taking a girl out on a date. Yeah. That doesn't really go well. Like they like they have Dude. they have it all Matt they they have it all algorithmed out. He's like, Yeah, typically it's like a guy taking like a college student out on a first date and then she hates it. And I was like So I, I don't know what he was worried about. I forget I forget what his apprehension was. I was like, I love the single ticket thing. Mm-hmm. And I, Cause all I thought about was Skankfest. I was like, bro. Watch this. I know exactly what's going to happen. You're going to let all these fucking weird dudes in. They are going to be fucking boys by the time the night's mm-hmm. over. And sure enough, uh, on the way out of the stand, as people were saying goodbye, it's all these dudes that were strange. It was like all the goodbyes were like, yo, bro, it was so nice meeting you. Hope that shit works out with your sister's house. You know what I mean? See you oh, again. damn. Every single dude clumped up with other dudes. Dude, that's awesome. And got gay as fuck. I yes. Thought you, <laughs> oh, God, I thought you guys were going to say you were all... Singing outside by Sting. That's coming. That is coming. We were feeling those lighters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if there's any kind of apprehension about anybody out there that's, you know, on the fence about possibly having to come by themselves, I promise you, we will do fat gay retarded shit with you and you're going to find a legion of fat gay retards there to join hands with. There's also a table of hot ladies. Really? And they were just there to see a comedy show. Oh, man. <laughs> and, but Danny told me that he was, like, setting up a camera. Yeah. And they, uh, someone from the staff walked over, and they're like, do you guys know what this show is? And they were like, no, we just want to have a good time. They were like, well, we have shows later that you could go to instead if you <laughs> oh, want. Oh, my gosh. And they were like, man, we'll just stick around. Like, they tried to, like, warn these girls against. They fucking loved it, dude. What oh, do you think? Oh, hell yeah, dude. I, you think they had a good time? course i know they did and yeah. uh one of them came up to me to say something afterwards and i completely misread it. i don't know if i misread it but i i naturally assumed she was being sarcastic and it was right when i got back from my uh fucking suicide yeah. hotel yeah. <laughs> where i was just i felt like a cat that just got back from the vet <laughs> and this lady comes up to me she's like you were good and i briefly thought about socking her as hard as i could <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> And uh, in hindsight, she might have just been paying me a compliment. Yeah, man. Dude, yeah. taking him anywhere, it's like carrying a fucking emancipated chimp on a leash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, don't punch a hole in the wall. Don't punch a hole in the wall. <laughs> Dude. I'm sure you did. You crushed. Yeah. It was great. At, yeah. at that moment, though, um, I think it was a combination of not feeling as though, like, I could have done something differently, but also, like not being able to process how well the whole night went. Yeah. Because I think I'm I'm just still conditioned and I'm quickly getting out of that into thinking that everything's going to be like, okay, that was good and that that's done. Whereas now it's like, okay, we had a show to do the next night, so I couldn't be a bitch baby. Yeah. So it's like, okay, and people are coming to see <laughs> Try us as he may. And, and want to have fun. Uh, so it's like, okay. That's the all-female remake to Boss Baby. <laughs> <laughs> so getting out of that fucking thinking that like, you know, like when you're first starting out in comedy, how you don't want anybody to come. Yeah. yeah. So there was like, now it's just like, like seeing the people come. It's like, yeah, I want more. Like, uh, like when a when a, when you start watching the ladies uh, do things on stage, you're just like, yeah, do that. Yeah, come on, give me more, baby. <laughs> you want more? Than this? Yeah. <laughs> I want it. Yeah. <laughs> What? What is that? Jake, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm becoming. Oh, yeah. Jesus, what I'm trying to say is that I love the show. Dude. Wow, man. Dude. Two good shows. Mike's a completely different person. This is nuts. <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, I, we're going to have to be doing this like five shows a weekend soon. Man. I cannot fucking wait, dude. I, I, I truly love doing stand up again. Can't wait to the dad meet cruise happens. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> dude, it's, dude, on our ship, instead dude. of a pool, we're going to have a big foam pit for you. <laughs> <laughs> for the sliding board. I'm coming for that foam pit, man. I'm coming for its neck. Mm. Oh, dude, we had the best sandwich of our life, too. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we went to Joey Rose's finally. Oh, dude, I've been wanting to go up there and check that out. Dude, it is fucking incredible. Yeah. Uh, the ambiance is great. The fucking music's fucking, it rules. Uh, the sandwiches are the best sandwiches ever. The soda's fucking good. The staff's <laughs> super nice. Um, 
And before we left, I went to shake the bartender's hand and I knocked a soda all over him. <laughs> <laughs> Can't recommend it enough. Ten out of ten. Dude, we I, I uh, this is the first time I ever made friends with a bartender in my life. Really? This is. I think it might be one of the reasons I don't go into bars. Every time I go to a bar, I just feel contempt from bartenders. Mm -hmm. And this dude just looked like every other bartender. He was like tatted up, looked like he just woke up because it was like lunchtime. Yeah. And uh, I was like, wow, you know, here's a bartender. And he was the cool dude. Shout out Lucas from Joey Roses. He'll never yeah, hear this, man. but that's my fucking boy, oh, dude. Yeah. We were fucking broing down hard. We were talking about like the fucking weird music that was playing and, and mushrooms. And man, we really had a great time. I just what a perfect weekend. I don't have a job. <laughs> I got fired. <laughs> you got from a my new job. job, baby. Hopefully. And then, you know. It's crazy that Twitch is going so well. There's so much to be thank. Friends, you it's time to rejoice. You started OnlyFans. God, a lot I might of have to. In that chat. I might have to, dude. If I just got fully, <laughs> if I got fully jacked, and I was like, you know, we're we're really hurting for money. You know how when ladies start OnlyFans, they usually start. I off don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you when ladies start <laughs> off OnlyFans, story. dude. They normally start with something uh, relatively benign. What like a tumor. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they put lingerie around it. <laughs> what would you start off with? I don't know. What would you? Why would you suggest? As you, you as the uh, connoisseur, I would probably go with a very tasteful shoot featuring you doing something manly, like you sawing on a sawhorse, and then maybe the next shot is you wiping your brow, still holding the saw. Mm -hmm. Um, the next shot, maybe you shoving a spindle up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I really think you could start that way, buddy. Yeah, I, I'd do that. I guess, I guess it would be tough because, you know, every, every dude that I guess does like adult entertainment wants to please ladies, but I think more often than not, they end, their audience ends up being gay dudes. You know, yeah, and that's a tough bridge to cross. Then what do you do? Do you pander to the gay dudes because they're bringing in the loot? Oh yeah, you got to yeah. get paid for sure. Yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, you're just doing the worm. Yeah, I'd, yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd be stuff. wearing fake hooves with like a unicorn yeah. beret. Uh, is this what yeah. you guys want? <laughs> <laughs> Having those little Come on. shock things yeah. on their nipples. Yeah, baby, give me a little bit more of that. Yeah. Give me a little bit more of that. Let me, unicorn, let me suck that hood. <laughs> <laughs> Step on my balls, and hoofs, baby. Give me a little bit. Give me a little bit of hoof on my balls, baby. I will say, uh, you had said about going to a show alone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's the best way to take in a show. Too. Oh, no doubt. Like I love going to shows alone, like especially comedy shows. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. So the fact that you guys sold out the room with single ticket sales, it's like you sold double. Did you just cut yourself? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Jake, that's an excellent point, because yeah. I will say this. If any of your wives are anything like mine in that she can't get through a fucking toilet paper commercial without asking me what it's about, <laughs> the gift in going by yourself is you will not experience any of that. Yeah. No, bring people, actually. Yeah. Bring people to yeah, these yeah. shows, yeah, please. Yeah, you want to bring people, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're not fucking making money hand over fist. We need every ticket sold. Yeah. <laughs> Don't count on the fact that they're... Actually, try to get a group that takes up all the tickets, if possible. <laughs> but if you're stuck and you're the only person you know that wants to see some fucking retards... It's worth it. Get there, yeah. yeah. Don't miss out. You'll find your people. Dude, it's like it's like-hearted. You know, I was saying, uh, people say like-minded people. It's like-hearted people. Yeah, we're like-hearted. Oh, like-hearted people. Like -hearted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because this is like this is seriously like a, a once in a lifetime thing. I mean, more stuff is coming down the pike, but this is the 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 beginning of it. This is the most special time to go. It is, and a big part of like why this is so much fun is because it's setting up the next, in my mind, like the next phase of what I want to do is just incorporate all of our boys into like what we're doing. Because mm -hmm. oh, like right now it's just like okay, we're we're doing this, but it's like okay, in a few more shows it's like all right, I want you to do stuff with us. I want Del Calo to do stuff yeah. with us. Of course, you know, fucking. Every, everybody that we have on the show is somebody that that we love dearly, and you know, success is only like fun to any degree of success is only fun if the people around you that you love are able to share in it with you. Yeah. So yeah, I just want to make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just That's want like, Tim's OnlyFans to make a lot of money too. Like I got a text uh, from my buddy uh, David James the other night. Mm -hmm. He was doing a show down in Wilmington, and he just. Text me a screenshot of, of like the or just a picture of the venue, and he's like, "If people ask why I killed myself, <laughs> and it's just like a bar show where yep. like everyone, and you know, it was like ten thirty. He's like, there's still six comics before me, 
Uh, and then he texts me 20 minutes later, and now there's a raffle. Oh, God. And he God, said he no, got on no, stage, no, was no, like, no, you no, guys no. don't deserve my material, and then just left. Good. Whoa. Yeah, I was like, dude, that's a baller move. But yeah. also, you waited like four hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true, yeah. <laughs> but- <laughs> After he lost the raffle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's what that's essentially what stand-up comedy is oh, like God. all the time. So what you guys yeah. are doing is Yeah, when, when you're outside of like a major market city, yeah. it's grim. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty sad. Dude. And then even in New York, a lot of it's still really sad. Dude, it's so bad. And then if you get like decent enough where people hire you like outside of those situations, those situations are like terrible. Like Yeah. I got hired to do a bachelor party for a born I didn't know they were born again until I showed up. Mm. And I was like, Oh, what are you guys drinking in the back? They're like, Oh no, no, we don't drink. Don't even bring it up. And I was like, Oh God. They're like, Oh, don't mention God either. And I was like, oh. Uh, uh, and, the, and the guy walks me in the back. It's literally just a bunch of dudes just drinking like Mountain Dew, sitting on the deck. So like that sounded fun. Yeah. But like literally the guy goes, all right, guys, uh, here, here's uh, Jake. And then he just like sits next to a dog sniffing my crotch <laughs> while I'm trying to tell 20 minutes of jokes. Well, in that dog's defense, you did smear peanut butter. All <laughs> Jake, you sure yeah. you didn't say board again? <laughs> But yeah, dude, it's like it's always the worst kind of gigs. What did you open with? I, I honestly, oh, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, pretty much that. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Oh. Uh, yeah. All right, well, I'm attack. Uh, yeah. I was blocking the only exit too, so yeah, that's it's way better. Than what you guys are doing? What made the beagle stop? <laughs> when uh, yeah. When I had, I know, I, I have two jars of peanut butter in my pocket. It was, <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw one away to get away. Jeez Louise. Yeah, uh, Danny, you said something to me so funny like two uh, like two weeks ago after the show. You just casually mentioned that vets now come to your house to kill your animals. Yeah. What? Tim, vets will now come to your house your house to euthanize your pets. Um... I'm sure neighbors would do that for free. Is this like an app that you get? <laughs> <laughs> That's I think they're licensed to do it. I don't. This might be black yeah. market euthanasia. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. But I think it's sweet. I think it's sweet. That's what Uber X is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder if you could like, I don't know. Let's say you have like a kid that you really hate. I wonder if you could like dress them up, put like a Chewbacca costume on them, and get a. <laughs> Get a black market veterinarian to come euthanize them. Yeah. There he is running through the, <laughs> the woods. Uh, yeah, those are my bunk dog beds. <laughs> Dude, he's sleeping. You can just put him down. Go ahead. I already said goodbye. I wonder if like for the dogs, like the guy just smears Nutella all over his nuts. <laughs> you know, Tim, dogs can't have chocolate. Ah, right. Thank you. Thanks for that, Mike. Yeah. So when you guys were up in Albany, did you see like any traces of like uh, any of the the Nexium cult that was up there? Oh, I wasn't aware of that. No, you really dropped the ball, man. That sounds wow. like your shit. It does, man. I, I'm really wait. Wasn't Nexium though like a guy who was just like getting a lot of pussy? He was getting a lot. Yeah, yeah. he had like a whole sex cult following him and everything. Mm. But it was yeah. based out of Albany. Mm. Yeah. I wonder if there's any cults that aren't <clears throat> sex cults. Where they're just drinking out and do having comedy shows, <laughs> <laughs> letting dogs suck the comedians' dicks. Yeah. <laughs> yep, but I would I, do a cult <laughs> comedy show for sure. If a cult I would love hire it, yeah. me, yeah, yeah. Dude, any cult that I've ever found that about, everything about it sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite? Ah, uh, Manson. Right, it's course. everything like the, it, I'm too stupid to. That not. was like the Beatles of cults, where it's like <laughs> obviously it was the best, but it, you know what I mean. But yeah. it's so yeah. I, and it, considering my intelligence level, I'm stunned that I didn't get into a cult. I probably would have if I didn't start getting pussy when I did. There was a guy who recruited me to start coming to his prayer group when I worked as an orderly. I never went, but I said, okay, that I would go. That might have been the start. Classic move. Yeah. I love saying, yeah, sure, definitely. Let me, mm-hmm. Let's me let figure it out. Yep. And then no. Yeah, I could have been a... <laughs> That's been, a butterly no. <laughs> I could have been a prayer warrior. Dude. Man. Oh man, you you told me a story about your aunt. Oh, the garter. Oh God, dude. What what's the garter story? Uh, we were talking. Well, about, why were we talking about it? About getting married. Oh, because I wanted to renew my vows, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When my creep aunt got <laughs> married for I think the third time, 
she got married in my living room. <laughs> in your living room? So, yeah. That's so shitty. <laughs> and dude, please place your hand on this TV guide. <laughs> <laughs> and dude, she got ready in my sister's room. And for oh some reason, God. dude, for some oh reason, they called me up there to take pictures and what they wanted to take a picture of. And there is a photo of this. How old are, how old are you at the time? Dude, single digits, um, like low single digits too. Maybe like, I'm going to say seven. Oh, man, I thought you were, like, 19 in this story. No. Oh, all right. I changed my mind about the story. I don't want to hear it anymore. Uh, well, <laughs> well, now I'm, yeah. I'm all yeah. in. I'm already cannonballing yeah. in, baby. But they made me... They took a picture of me putting the garter on my fucking aunt's leg. Oh, at seven? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Everybody thought it was hilarious. And she wasn't hot. <laughs> that <doesn't, laughs> that matter. Yeah, was she fat? <laughs> no. No. She, yeah, just married looked, three she just times. looked like a rough bar bitch. Damn. She was very into... Um, can, can I Do you have it? the picture? Is it in your wallet? It's at my mom's house. Oh. I know I could get it from her. Yeah, you, you're going to have to make a trip to your mom's house, yeah. dude. I will. But like, she was very into... Like, we're we're, we're going to do like an Are You Garbage yeah. style like Patreon like <laughs> are you reward molested? stream. Yeah. It's like once we do, once we hit you know 4,000 patrons a month, we're going to go to Mike's house and find all the evidence of him being molested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was just a, a rough gross bitch damn and she was into like fast cars and fast dudes does she have a tattoo of an eight ball <laughs> i don't think she was or a, a spade lady. <laughs> <laughs> that's insane yeah is, is she still married to that guy she's dead jake oh yes. my god no she uh she was someone whose death i was happy <laughs> to hear about garter cut off circulation <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah i'm sorry to hear that man but yeah. at least you have that nice memory to yeah, remember I, her by i always have that yeah but yeah, yeah she she died this year, and uh, we should have went to the funeral. So we should have went to the funeral. I'm good, man. <laughs> Dude, that was something. I've actually, I don't know. The last interaction that I had with her, she owed me money because when I first met my dude, wife, when we get to four thousand patrons, we're gonna go to her grave and come on it. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she would probably like that. We're gonna come on her no. tombstone. <laughs> Dude, uh, the last interaction I had with this lady, um, she owed me money because when I first met my wife, I was still in contact with my aunt, and um, she always had some sob story. For the longest time, I believed it. Yeah. So I went over there, and she was talking about how her electric's going to get cut off. She doesn't have money for this, that. So I was saving up money to buy my wife an engagement ring, and I gave her all the money that I had. And I was just, it took a while for me to realize, like, oh, shit, I'm not going to get that money back. However, she did receive slip and fall money. And when she got that, she left it at my mom's house for me. It was like 300 bucks. So, like, one day my mom just called me up out of the blue. She's like, yo, your aunt left you 300 bucks that you had lent her a few years back because her lawsuit money came through. Wow. I give her credit for that, yeah. Jesus Christ. What a... I mean, that's almost like a Delco fable. (laughs) (laughs) Like, that's such a common story. Oh, man. (laughs) Yeah. Dude, and that day, your too, aunt waiting on slip and fall money to pay back <laughs> the money that she borrowed you that you were saving up for an engagement ring, dude, that, to a lady that you never met, ended up marrying. Yeah. Tim, to the Doko fable, like I almost stabbed the guy that night because this was after you gave her the money that that night. No, or, I had or given it to her years back. prior. Okay, my mom lived almost directly across from Barnaby's and Ridley, and okay. I went over. That'll I got the three hundred bucks cash, and I was like, I didn't know what to do with this money. So I went over to Barnaby's and I drank by myself all night. And there was a guy playing Dave Matthews covers, acoustic. Nobody gave a fuck about it, about him except me. And I was sitting, I was watching, I was being polite. you just intently just watching him? <laughs> Jack, I was, man, yeah. I, I was enjoying it, but more so, you know, as somebody who's eating shit in front of a room full of apathetic people, you know, I had that going too. Yeah. yeah. And he played, you know the song Number 41 by Dave Matthews? No. Yeah, not it's really a lovely song. I never heard it before. He played it, and he took his break at that point. I went up to him. I think I gave him like 20 bucks. And I was like, dude, what was that song? And he told me it's number 41. I was like, listen, I know you just played it, but would you mind playing it again at the end of the night? Yeah. He's like, yeah, no problem. So he comes back on a little bit, and he starts playing again. He plays a bunch more songs. He's like, all right, we got one more song left. I was like, all right, here we go, number 41 again. You have your lighter in Get my feelings. Like, yeah. it, it, really, like, it was really a beautiful song. He launches into fucking tripping billies. And in my mind, I was like, like, I, I did have a knife on me. Like, I was so drunk at this time and so angry because I had given this guy money. I was the only person that fucking gave him money. 
and he yeah. didn't play the fucking song I asked him to play. For a second, I'm like, I'm going to stab this fucking guy. <laughs> but then I was just like, you know what? Maybe I'll just cut his van tires. Oh, my God. I didn't even know that he had a van. So, thankfully, like, I ended up just going home at one point. But, like, that was probably... You, laid on the you went back to his minutes. hotel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Came back, he was gone. I'm being a little bitch right now. You just follow him out to a car with a knife and make him play you the song. Yeah. I know you got a date yeah. in Matthew's van. <laughs> Crash into this. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, would it be fair to say? <laughs> Funny the way it is, isn't it? Man. Hey, Matthew sucks. Oh, I love that song, though, man. I don't know if I've ever heard it. I'm going to play it for you tonight. I'll listen to it. Are you gonna, do you have a guitar? No. Oh, man. Jake would probably play it. Jake would probably play it, too. What's it called? Yeah. Number 41? Yeah. All right. We'll look it up. I'm going to say it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dave Matthews is, like, uh, music for, like, uh, college-age dudes who, like, maybe haven't experienced the arts before, but now they're in like a social setting and they don't live with their parents for the first time and they're trying to figure out how to socialize. And it's like, I couldn't even imagine moving my body in a way that wouldn't repulse most women. So I'm going to go to a bar full of other dudes, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Like me, while a guy just like up strums on an acoustic guitar and you just like start like bouncing your heels in and out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dave Matthews is essentially getting ready music for date rapists. <laughs> and I'm just going to keep this hacky sack in my pocket yeah. just in case someone needs it. <laughs> yeah. That shit sucks. <laughs> yeah. This is a lovely song though. You'll like it. Yeah. There was one song I liked by Dave Matthews. I'll admit to it. It was a uh, grave digger. Uh, I remember that. It's a, just a That's a great monster truck. Probably yeah. a terrible song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was actually his theme music. He would ride out to it. <laughs> you ever go to Monster Truck Rally? Oh, yeah. I'd love to. Yeah. I fell asleep at one I as never, a child. Oh. I never yeah. went to one. I'd love to go. That was, I would probably lose mm -hmm. it, like mentally. It It is really fucking cool. That was my dad's big story about me when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. It was like, you fell asleep at a monster truck show. No. Oh. That's or, a great dad story. Yeah. I also, I went to a couple. I remember I went to one where they had Truckzilla or whatever his name was. Yeah. I was thinking of my dad's story. My my dad's story was Easter. I remember we went to every uh, Easter we'd go to my aunt's house, and uh, we were all in line. It was like a buffet style, and literally I was in front of my dad, and he's like four people behind me, standing with the other dads, and he's I'm like maybe like eleven. He's like, "Oh, Jake's up there, so there's not gonna be any left for the rest of us." <laughs> oh, <I love> it. <laughs> and I was just like, "God damn." <laughs> You right. <laughs> you. Did you ever win tickets to a monster truck show on the radio? No, I was given tickets to one, though, and um, I, I would definitely like to be laid to rest in a monster hearse. That's Gravedigger. He's the hearse, right? He's the monster he? hearse. I think so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I won tickets on the radio one time. I just made that connection. And I never bothered to pick them up. I was just like, oh, no. it was a lot cooler when I was on hold. <laughs> yeah, you I think if you ever buy monster truck tickets, like you're a real dickhead cuz they're never not being given away. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody watching has season tickets right now and you're just breaking their heart. Yeah. Yeah. I bought a club box ticket. So <laughs> <laughs> Damn. What was that like? Did you get bottle service? <laughs> you got throttle Mountain service? Code, Mountain Dew Code Red. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, another fish stick? <laughs> Dude, for uh, $38, so you get the show and nonstop chicken fingers and fries. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah, okay. Nice. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. My bad, actually. Nonstop is a very funny way to describe buffet style food. <laughs> nonstop. <laughs> We're trying to set up a medieval time strip. Danny's been to a, a prolific number of medieval times. I would love that. Jake, have you ever been to one? No, I've never been to one. That sounds like my shit. Yeah. yeah. It is a lot of fun. You're like a connoisseur of the, the times. I think we're going to have to set yeah, it up. It's my favorite uh, restaurant. We're going to set it up sometime around the Baltimore trip. Can you take pictures with like the king and stuff like that? Is there a oh, king and yeah. queen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to bow before him, Jake. Yeah. <laughs> the genuine flag. Yeah. You just see they're like just totally zoned out on something while you take photos with them. Cable guy really does medieval times justice. Yeah. Oh, you've been? Yeah. I went to the one down in Orlando 
which was one of my favorite family vacations, and that was a big reason why. Well, uh, yeah, Cable Guy was the reason I wanted to go, but Danny said that the one in the one in North Jersey is shit. That's like that's midi that's jousting open mic basically. <laughs> yeah, you might have just went to Newark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But the, so he said you go to Baltimore or the one outside of Baltimore. So I'm excited about that. But we have to do it before Skankfest because the Tournament of Kings at Ex, where is it? Excalibur yeah. in Vegas. That's apparently top of the mountain. Whoa. Yeah. So it's time to it's that it, sounds sick. It's time to get for real about medieval times. I would like. Do you that. think medieval times sends like scouts out to like LARPing events? Oh like geez, man! Imagine being that guy. Yeah, there has to be. You're in like the green visor chainmail, <laughs> <laughs> just writing up stats for dudes getting like bonked with a shield. Yeah. <laughs> just pull up in your station wagon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Um, fuck, I know a dude who's deep into that as well. Into the night fighting. Is that uh, Piccolomini? No, Joe Harcourt. Okay, he's super deep in it, and. Uh, I've hit him up before about getting involved, but I just don't want to get a concussion. You're guaranteed to get a concussion. Wait, really? These dudes are just swinging at each other's heads as hard as I they can. I thought there was like foam swords, though. Like, uh, There is that. I wouldn't even talk about that. Jake. Okay. Jake, right. I like how you just mention, casually mentioned foam fucking weapons <laughs> like it was nothing. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah. Uh, I'm going. I'm going where they are, they're swanging real. They're swanging and clanging on each other. Damn. And that's what I want a piece of. But God, I don't want to fucking. Is there a black medieval times that we could go to? <laughs> Check Atlanta. Check the Atlanta location. <laughs> <laughs> like they're jousting with like a fat white girl driving the horse. Goldie. <laughs> it's medieval times with a Z. <laughs> it's gold chain mail. <laughs> They're wheeling the horses. (laughs) (laughs) Does thou protest, no limit soldier? (laughs) Dude, black medieval times would be so sick. (laughs) The Black Knight always makes it to the final round. Wow, he's the final boss. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's that. Does he play dirty? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What does he have? Like 15 minutes of his friends jump the other guy. Man, that was hard to get out. Dan, yeah, that's cool. Was 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 he have like a sword or something? If if he's he watching you plow through a sentence like that is so funny. Definitely does that. Yeah, dude, was he, was he probably... He's got a fucking fat white girl driving his horse. <laughs> Definitely has grape meat. Uh, it's like a main character in a cuck porn. <laughs> he probably has like mismatched colors on his chariot. <laughs> Does this, 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 this start because someone scuffed his armor? Get that. Please tell me the horse has rims. Uh, Dude, that's my cue to stop saying racist jokes. I'm I'm done. Yeah, it's just bile now. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> if only God would give me a story. <laughs> like died doing what he loved. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely want to go to Atlanta to see medieval times now. He's jousting on a stolen girl's horse. <laughs> <laughs> He's riding <in> sidecar. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> that's incredible. What else could we go to? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's hopefully something cheap or free. Mm. You know, don't stop worrying about money. Oh, yeah, yeah, everything, right. dude, you're you're right. get everything he you just want. lost his job. I stop just, yeah, lost my job. Hey, man, get it together. Yeah, yeah. Well, I the fucked up thing was, was I bought a new car the day before I got fired. <laughs> no. Oh no! Did you really? Yeah. Mercedes. Yeah. <laughs> It was, uh, it was actually two Mercedes <laughs> conjoined, so it was really expensive. Damn. 
I know. They said don't do it. This isn't <laughs> this isn't even a I don't even like giving you this deal. And I said, Bro, I'm a podcaster and IT guy. I can <laughs> I can afford anything the world own uh, contains, dude. I demand it. <laughs> They're like, all right, well you don't want any extras, right? In the car? I said, No extras, sir. <laughs> Load up both cars with the most premium S package. Charge me for both, Damn. dude. Yeah. And I said, I want a backup Mercedes in case both of these get fucked up. So I bought three Mercedeses Jesus. all decked out the day before I got fired from my job. So just really just really hit that Patreon as hard as you can. Guys. <laughs> yeah, smash that motherfucking Patreon button. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had to return my daughter's braces. <laughs> Cut the cars, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you know, you know what that's like, man. <laughs> Went from an S class to an F class. <laughs> <laughs> I had the dentist to fucking come to my house to euthanize her. Tim, you should have showed up tonight in an onion sack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start wearing a barrel with suspenders yeah. everywhere I go. <laughs> To have a bindle sticking yeah. out from yeah. Do they make do they make burlap tracksuits? <laughs> <laughs> Did you just fucking call me paw? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. It's gonna be cool. So tomorrow's gonna be my first day waking up without a job, and that oh, wow. I think that might be cool, or it awesome. might be the lowest feeling. I don't know. I'm gonna find out. Dude, that oh. stream's gonna be that Twitch stream's gonna be hit hard. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do a date. I'm doing date. Thank you for reminding me. I'm doing daytime Twitch streams this week. Gonna try yes. them out. I don't Hell if yeah. if the numbers tank, I'm gonna abort. Real quick. So I'm thinking I might do the first one tomorrow during the day. Just chilling, playing video games, maybe browsing the web, see what's going on on the web. And then uh, maybe, you know, maybe another day, depending on our travel schedule. Mm -hmm. But the sun, dude, the Sunday morning coffee stream remains the best stream. Popped off, baby. Dude, okay. <clears throat> Let's think about this, right? I know my limitations as a comedian. I, st I, I can't deliver a punchline. It's fine. I can I can have fun on stage. I know that on Twitch, I think I could be the best. I think I could be the best Twitch in the world. I know you can. You, you already I mean? are. I'm, well, I think I can. I think I could take a Twitch to the top. I just need the belief and a couple of clicks from everybody. That's all I need. And if we, dude, you just got to see the fucking live chat in the Twitch. I, dude, it's just like this, except like you know, there's more media going. We're we're we're, we're getting uh, we're listening to cool tunes, and um, it's it's a lot of fun. And I just once you get a once you get a taste of it, I think people will be convinced. I, I, Tim, I would consider if you're up for this, bringing Mr. Twitch to your house, like Clark Griswold had <laughs> cousin Eddie bring Frank Furley, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, I will butt fuck him if you need me to, mm -hmm. but I will bring him to your house <laughs> mm -hmm. and show him what's out there. Yeah, and I think that would change his tune because they've been keeping me down every which way they can. Uh oh. Yeah, they hold they they've been you mean every Twitch way. Ooh. Jake. Boy, if you don't eat my pussy, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they fuck they they fuck up like my totals and stuff like that. Yeah, like the numbers get a little bit wonky sometimes. Some of my shit Wait, shows really? zeros. Yeah, dude, and I think it's just probably a common Jim. problem on there. But uh. yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say that they're targeting me because that I think helps metrics. Mm. Well, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Twitch.tv slash Tim Butterly. Sorry, forgot so, to drop it. That kind of thing is not something that I would normally watch. But yours is more captivating than I think anybody could ever hope to. The only other person that I've even caught a glimpse of that was as entertaining was uh, Dr. Dr. Disrespect yeah. the Goat. Yeah. That guy's fucking awesome. Yeah. It was a shame they kicked him off. They kicked him off entirely. What's do you know about now? this? I, do, I am aware that so, like, it was like some lame shit. So the, the, best, the best Twitch streamer of all time is Dr. Disrespect. He wears like... Uh, like 80s action movie mullet wig and yeah. he's got like a thick black mustache and he wears like um wrap arounds why they kick him off no one knows it's a mystery now a little bit of backstory this dude so and he, he's wearing like a, a a tactical vest the whole time and he's in <laughs> he's, a man. he's a very very funny character he's so fucking funny yeah. and um and he like almost 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 never breaks character and the way he got started was like he was like a big Call of Duty guy in like the 2000s. And I think at one point he even like worked with like the developers and like made maps and shit like that. And then he just started, he would do Twitch streams just demolishing people. And then he adopted this character. It's so funny. Um, a couple of years ago, he was like kind of like getting like big time. Like yeah. he was coming at like he was being invited to like conventions and esports events and stuff like that. Wow. And at one point he uh, started having an affair on his wife. 
and he came on the Twitch and he like was out of character and like crying and announced it. No. And it was like, oh, dude, no. He's what? like, I did not have an additional player too. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> just... <laughs> dude, he came on and he was like, I got something personal to share. And oh, it was God. like, oh, no. Yeah. And he was like, dude, it was the saddest shit I've ever seen. Was he crying and wearing the vest? <laughs> that would have been so fucking good. It would have been. I mean, that would have been yeah. it forever if yeah. he did that in the vest. But uh, yeah, apparently no. It was. I think sometimes it was sometimes this vest can't protect you from everything. <laughs> <laughs> like your feelings. Yeah, dude. He. Oh my god. He. Yeah. He. Apparently, he like fucked a lady at like a gaming convention or something like that. And he, oh, I think he was being blackmailed. He was being blackmailed about it, and By that her? was like. I don't know if it was her or someone else, but yeah. Oh, and he, he came on his, to his stream and like announced it, and it was like this really sad shit to watch. As many and of then, you may have noticed, my wife has changed her Instagram handle from Annette Fulginetti hyphen disrespect <laughs> to Annette Fulginetti. <laughs> <laughs> so people thought he was done forever. This is crazy because he, I think on Twitch he was making $90,000 a month. Holy oh my God. crap. Isn't that crazy? On Twitch? $90,000 a month between like... Wow. Ads, subscriptions, partnerships, advertising, and shit like that. And then, um, so then, and it's just like Twitch kind of sucks. I, I, I kind of don't enjoy just watching like an autistic dude just be the best at a video game, like sitting there with his mouth open and just like cl clicking. <laughs> just like, all, I mean, all, all you're watching usually on Twitch is just a guy pointing a mouse cursor on people's heads and clicking. And then they look over and they're wearing a flat brim and they're trying to talk like a TikToker, but it's just like a, a dork. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yo, thanks, y'all. Thanks, fams in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. And then they flip out when they die. Yeah. Fucking game, dude. Um, But he did come back. And that was a couple of years ago. And then one day he was mysteriously banned from the entire platform. And I think he had like a contract with them. It was Whoa. beyond. It was beyond just him signing up and like doing it and making money. He had like a, a contract with them, and they banned him from the website. With and no reason, right? For no, well, no reason given, and he was silent about it. And people thought that maybe he was like preparing a lawsuit or something, and he was like staying quiet on purpose to not fuck that up, or maybe it was like so bad that he needed no one to talk about it. Mm. And instantly, like the fucking video game, like journalist dudes yeah. and like Twitter verified dudes start saying that he was like they were like you know look at all the facts this has to be a sexual assault mm -hmm. they start saying we're 99% certain this has to be a sexual assault and then uh, eventually he just starts streaming on YouTube and he comes out and he's like that is completely like that there was that was based on nothing and these like Twitter checkmark dudes there's no recourse for that you could just say Dude. that he, he so Dr. Disrespect doesn't even know why he was banned from Twitch he does not know the reason. And now he's just suing them because, like, it fucked up his money. Yeah. But Did he, like, how fucking dark is that? And then just accuse him of sexual assault like that is kind of... Dude, that's nuts. Yeah. The world we live in. Isn't when, that crazy? When Jake was going for two weeks to have his baby, Stop. I considered me tooing him. Stop, dude. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't do that. Man. I'm still going to get you. <laughs> I'm gonna get with a good one too. <laughs> like that's like, maybe he like had like an affair with somebody higher up at Twitch, like I the wife. Well, or one thing I think that happened is uh, he used to get in a little bit of trouble because he does a really good uh, fake Chinese voice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he does fake Asian language because uh, every every big like shooting game that comes out, um, somehow Call of Duty avoided it, but inevitably gets overrun with Chinese cheaters. So you're just playing a game and a guy is standing in the middle of the game just spinning around shooting a bullet across the game killing everybody. And then like when you hear that guy chatting it's always like you know, I'm not going to do it. Now is not the time. <laughs> now is not the time to do it. But what he would start doing was like just trying to talk to these people in fake Chinese language and it was just it was stupid but it's the funniest fucking thing. Dude. Look dude look up Dr. Disrespect fake Chinese on YouTube. Uh, Tim, can you keep speaking while Jake does the imitation? No, 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 no If I hide my mouth so you can't yeah. tell that I'm saying Yeah, sure, it. go ahead. <laughs> Just start cutting the cord. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like Twitch was looking for a reason and they found one. Yeah, I don't even think they needed one. I don't think I don't think that, that Chinese thing even came up because I think he stopped doing it when, you know, people started 
hmm. getting rowdy about you know is twitch shit. owned by ago. like some kind of chinese i think it's owned by amazon it is man so oh. at any time they can go pee pee in your coke <laughs> <laughs> that's the most fucked up aspect right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, join the Patreon for just two dollars to hear that impression. Yeah. Actually, the Chinese impression tier that's five dollars a month on Patreon, dude. I do, I'm going to do an entire episode in just fake Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> I, and to to help Tim out, I will staple the corners of my eyes to the back of my head. <laughs> that's the ten dollars tier for for five dollars a month. You get one episode every month. It's entirely in fake Chinese. That's a guarantee. We're going to set up the tiers this week. Don't worry about it. It's not a priority for us yet. But uh, look look forward to that. For the hundred dollar tier, we will get run over by a tank in Tiananmen Square. <laughs> so I'm already binding my feet for you guys. <laughs> yeah, so that's you know, that's 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 all I got to. Yeah, to, we shouldn't be say. so wanton with these uh, <laughs> jokes. Mike, <laughs> Mike, god damn it! Oh, and uh, if anyone listening or watching this cares about video games, Elden Ring is coming out soon. It's by the company FromSoft that makes Dark Souls. That's my main shit. Bloodborne's my main shit. I'm going to go hard on Elden Ring while not having a job. Mm. Let's stream a ton of that. So I'm happy for you. Twitch.tv. Dude, I, I, I've told you this a million times, and I just want to keep hammering this home, that I hope that, that you see yourself the way that I see you, and I think this is going to be your fucking ascent. Thank you, dude. Yeah. I think people are going to gravitate to you more than they have so far, and your growth is going to be exponential, and you're going to do everything that you want, and shit's just going to happen for you. And it's not just going to be because of like something happening all of a sudden. Like You've already put in years of work to lay the groundwork for what you have right now, and it's just going to fucking take off. Thanks, man. I can't, I, Dude, I just can't wait to keep having fun. I'm with you, buddy. You know, Dude. and make a ton of money. I cannot wait to make a ton I of mean, money. I mean, you Fuck. just you just said it a minute ago. Like what I heard you say is, there's an opening to be the guy at Twitch. That's what I'm going to do. Basically, I'm going to keep my natural hair color. I'm not going to dye it pink and fucking play Roblox and molest children. Oh no! That's it. <laughs> yeah. The real dude. The real way to become a big time video game streamer is have purple hair. And play uh, baby video games with toddlers and scream and pretend to be scared and then also secretly molest them. Here's a guarantee. I'm not Ooh. doing any of that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing any of that. I'm doing it the old-fashioned way. Tim, how dire would things have to get for you for you to consider <laughs> molesting children on Twitch? Oh, my Twitch? God, dude. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the health insurance marketplace, but <laughs> yeah. the prices are crazy. You dude, know what if, I mean? If I break a finger, I will have to kill myself because yeah. I do not have health insurance. <laughs> you don't have health insurance? No. 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 Whoa. Yeah, so. I think my jaw might be dislocated. So yeah, actually, up, up that insurance. Patreon to four dollars, please. <laughs> you, and every week you have knives when you don't have health insurance. You just flip them around. Jake, I live fast and loose, baby. Dude. Yeah. Oh. What do you say? What do you say? Speaking of the Patreon, what do you say we go hang out over there? Let's do it, baby. Well, why don't we go warm the Patreon up? You know what I mean, Jacob? Oh, yeah. Anything you want to promote? Uh, no, uh, I have an album, a soft one. If you want to listen to comedy. Uh, you can check that out wherever you listen to comedy. You have any podcasts you enjoy doing? The one, the only, Little Stinkers with Mike Rainey over here, where we talk about a bunch of serial killers or the Impractical Jokers, uh, but mostly serial killers. Oh, speaking of that, and I'm going to bring this up on <clears throat> uh, on Tuesday night when we record again, I heard some some very shitty news about one of the Jokers. Oh, no. Somebody that was, who's a significant other, I won't say any more of it. A source? Joke. A source. The guy that just quit? No. Um, but a, a source. A bitch wife. No. Dude. <laughs> S- someone with an all-access pass to the Impractical Jokers cruise told me that one of them is an absolute fucking dickhead. Oh, man. Yeah. This changes everything. It does. So we'll, we'll get to that. But um, do, you, yeah. do you have any specifics? I don't want to divulge it right on now. Patreon. Yeah, maybe on Patreon. Oh, pay, do it behind yeah, the paywall, dude. Dude, I'm, I'm for gonna... as little as six dollars a month. You can join the <laughs> Is this episode brought to you by anybody? By the way, do we have any sponsors sending the, us money uh, for this? Uh, President Joseph R. Biden's <laughs> healthcare marketplace. <laughs> God damn! All right, let's go rub two nickels together. <laughs> we love you guys. We'll see you over on the page. Or did you want to? Oh yeah, just uh, w- watch little stinkers. Uh, I truly love doing it with uh, Jake and John and Danny every week. And uh, you think Jake's a pervert now? <laughs> Wait, do you check out him in Practical Jokers? <laughs> but, yeah, if you think Jake's a pervert now, just on when he other times, 
Yeah. <laughs> You're right on the money. <laughs> that sounds right. Yeah, so watch your practical jokers. <laughs> oh, and come see us in Boston. Oh, yeah, on this Thursday, Thursday night. night in Boston. Ticks uh, are in the by, uh, you know, the description. Uh, yeah, as of this afternoon, there were only 10 tickets left. So please Whoa. go Damn. to Whoa, dude. On my Instagram profile. You can see the the. They're in tree. the description yeah. of the YouTube video right now. In the description of the YouTube video right now. Please get your tickets to Boston. I want to see your, your smiling faces. And uh, when we're done, we're going to uh, go to Wahlburgers and, um, and maim. Burn it and down. Old, no, maim a Chinese man. <laughs> <laughs> we love the Chinese on this podcast, so we're not going to do also, that. Also, if you're in Philly, come to the live Wigger Roast at Helium Ooh, on Wednesday yeah, night. Baby. That's going to be retarded. That's going to be amazing. That's going to be retarded. Oh, dude, I'm it, getting fucked up. And even better, uh, I think within the next couple of days, we'll have a whole new slew of dates to announce for the uh, Bad Me Tour with Kali Terrell. Yeah, we can stop yeah, letting dickheads on the internet talk shit about it, whether or not it's a tour. It's going to be officially a tour yep. after this next bucket full of dates. All right. We love you guys. We'll go over on the Patreon. We'll see you then. Sold out Boston. Hell yeah.